Mech Engineers is a complicated game to cover for me personally, because this is one of those games that comes along once in a blue moon that is just fundamentally different from everything else on the market. If you've never seen Mech Engineers before, we've had the opportunity previously to show the game off in a much earlier format, but I'm happy to say that we're covering the game again because after a couple years, it's in a much better spot than it used to be. Uh, the game is much more learnable than it ever has been before. The downside here is that the game is still very complicated and a very complex roguelike with auto-battling mech building that's going to take a little bit of time to cut your teeth against. Otherwise, it's going to be one of those games you're just going to bounce off of, and I think the fundamental conflict for someone like me who is covering a game like this is how do I get across enough teaching for a player that buys the game after watching my video to play it themselves without leaving them high and stranded and disappointed while still being entertaining and showing off the action that the game has to unfold. So here in Mech Engineers today, we're going to check out the game. We're going to play around with some reactors, we're going to fiddle around with some mechs, we're going to fight some bugs, and hopefully it ends up being one of those things that really titillates your interest. Because I think this is actually one of the most unique games on Steam. For better or worse, some people will be upset about that, some people will be happy about that. It really just kind of depends what you're into. So we're going to play the game for a little bit. We're going to check it on out and hopefully have a good time with it. If after watching this you wanted to play some mech engineers for yourself, you can look down below in the description and find the game there. The developer is very active on my Discord as well. I'm pretty sure he probably has his own Discord, but if you join my Discord at the link down there too, uh, you may be able to ask him questions every now and again. I didn't really clear that with him and be like, hey, are you okay answering questions? But I'm sure he's created this magnificent game, so like... He's probably interested in talking about it. Someone that makes a game like this, which is probably like one of the most unique games on Steam, probably has a few thoughts about game design that might be worth picking their brain about. So let's get started. So at the beginning of every single run of Mech Engineers, you're gonna have to place your base because at the end of the day, this is a mech game that's very similar to XCOM. You're gonna have to place your base and what's gonna happen after you place your base is you're gonna be attacked by the enemy. You're gonna need to resolve that. So the way that you're gonna go ahead and fight off this first horde is that you've got all your mechs over here on the left. If you don't know how to kit out a mech, I'll show you how to do that a little bit later. But for right now, we need to go to our pilots tab and we've got a bunch of different pilots and they have a bunch of different stats. We're not really gonna talk about what those stats do for right now. I'm just trying to get you into the fray as fast as possible so that you can see kind of like the fun and the action of this game uh, Before you lose interest and click away basically. Let's see if we can grab a few people. Yeah, you're fine We'll grab you right there. We'll put you inside the hospital We will put let's see. What are you doing? We'll put you inside the simulator and then we'll probably just grab you. That's fine Now that we have our mech team you click on the mission and you can shift click people on in like so and we've got our four-man mech squad, and let me show you what battle looks like in this game. So in Mech Engineers, everything is incredibly analog. Uh, this game is basically like a microprose wet dream. This is the kind of game that they love to sign, and in fact, since the last time we covered the game, this game was independent last time we checked it out. It's still independent, but microprose is kind of guiding the process at this point. Uh, but we've got our viewport. Uh, this is, we have like a drone camera right here where we can see the battlefield and everything is very much conceptualized. This is our base right here. Uh, we are the last survivors on Earth fighting against a bug invasion that has won and that has defeated us, actually. We have been defeated by the bug horde. And so we are the final city of human beings and we have like, let's call it 15,000 human beings inside of this giant bipedal arc that walks around the planet. And we have to go on away missions to kill bugs and clear conflict zones and things of that nature in order to gather resources and do research and grab the things that we're going to need in order to get off the planet. Because we've actually decided to pull the ripcord and run away. Like, we are no longer going to be occupying Earth if we can help it. And so as you can see right here, we're being flooded by bugs from every single direction. All of my mechs are firing. There's a lot of meters. There's a lot of things happening. It's very sort of disorienting if you don't know what's happening right now. But really, we're just defending our arc. This is essentially a tutorial mission. 
Spacebar is going to pause the game whenever you need it to be paused. This down here is your LiDAR or like your radar. Each of those red dots is a bug. So obviously things are not looking super great for us right now. What you're going to want to do bright and early is you're going to want to click this little button right here. Very few things in this game are explained, but more of them are explained now than were before. This allows you manual camera control with WASD so you can control what the drone is looking at while you're flying around and it's not locked to your team. That way you can scout out situations and shoot, see who's firing at you from off screen. We can also change like the color palette of the viewport if we wanted to. We can make it full screen so you can actually get rid of this entire UI if you want and the entire thing will become the battlefield but I wanted to have my artillery button up and ready to go because I get the feeling we're probably gonna need it fairly shortly. So let's go ahead and get back to the fighting, shall we? Oh, we have a lot of bugs to take care of. I'm going to push out to here, and it should be about three waves in this first tutorial. And we're going to start out with a little bit of artillery fire going out. That should be enough, actually. I'm going to save my other two artillery strikes just in case. But as you can see, they're going to begin orbital bombardment. They're going to start knocking out everything inside of those circles. And that should thin out some of the waves. Now, as we fight on the left-hand side, you can see the reactor temperature of all of our combatants. When that goes up to max, they shut down, just like in Mech Warrior. You can also see how much ammo they have for each of their guns. Uh, they have to do long reload cycles. Uh, if you run out of ammo, so be very careful about that. We probably want to help out these turrets over here before they blow up. Doing the final wave with minus two turrets is going to suck. I don't know if they're going to save it in time, though. Ah, oh, they didn't save it. Okay, the turret's down, unfortunately. Uh, I think we have another wave coming in. So we are going to want to create a wall of artillery fire on this left side. Since we lost our left turrets, we're going to need to basically create a wall of explosions on that side while we focus on these guys until they're depleted and then we can push push in that direction essentially we're making a firewall right now uh, everybody should be more or less reloaded at the moment you can't give orders in this game except for two orders well three orders if you really think about it uh, orbital bombardment is one of the orders and then another one of the orders is commence with your mission, which means your little guys are just going to go about their mission by themselves and they are completely autonomous and sort of like auto battling. And then the other order is go to a spot with right click and you can only give an order when if you take a look, you see how there's like yellow lines leading towards our cursor only when that's fully flexed inwards are you allowed to give an order? So there's a delay on how frequently you can relay orders, but we killed off all the bugs that were attacking our Sky City, and now I can actually properly talk to you about the game because I've got you over the first hump, which is just this first battle right here, which I think for new players, it kind of throws you into the deep end mouth first and is just like, well, good luck. Like you can absolutely lose that fight multiple times in a row, get frustrated and just bounce off the game entirely. And so that's what I was trying to avoid by showing it. This is the world map. This is where I I've placed my base all around us. There are going to be various localities and locations that we can raid for various resources. We've got Metalite, Bjorn, Munalon, and Skalanit. Uh, those are all used for various functions throughout the base uh, in order to maintain, because not only is this an auto-battling roguelike, this is also a game where you're managing a city, which is effectively your XCOM base. Like, you've got different departments that you're going to have to deal with. You're going to have different stats and upgrades and things of that nature. But for right now, all of our mechs are in maintenance because they've all been deployed today. And all of our pilots that were involved in that combat are also exhausted. So they've got to wait till tomorrow before they can do anything else. The red meter on the bottom is their vitality. If it goes down to zero, they die. Uh, they can get shocked and they can get moved around inside the cockpit and like hit their head on the side of the hull. Uh, as they take damage, as their mech takes damage, there's a chance they'll lose stability, fall over, it'll wound the pilot, so on and so forth. So you kind of want this meter to be high. The meter up top with yellow, that's your X. P. Every three levels, they get one of these perks right here. After missions, you can also give them medals and stuff, but the medals don't seem to do anything right now. This left tab is your engineering department. This is your crafting table. You can take any object inside of here, and you can put it on the crafting table, and it will allow you to modify the stats. It will allow you to add mods to these things. It will give you a full testing display where you can see how the weapon performs at various ranges and also against targets that move and dip and slip and dodge. Uh, the the thing, th big thing with the beginning of the game you want to do is that all of your weapons are not configured by default. You've got a whole bunch of points down here that you can apply to attributes. 
So you've got firing speed right here. You've got the weight of the weapon, which you're definitely going to want to get down to like 15 for a rocket launcher. You've got the accuracy, which you can ignore entirely because these are heat-seeking rockets, so accuracy is irrelevant. You've got the energy efficiency over here, uh, how much it costs you to fire the weapon, and you've got the armor piercing of the weapon down here at the bottom, which I would suggest it's a really good idea to have at least a couple weapons in the early game that have some pretty solid armor piercing. Now you can save this loadout by clicking the up arrow, and then if you drag another one in here, you can hit the down arrow, and it will automatically refit all these rocket launchers to the specifications that you gave for the first rocket launcher. I've already done it with the miniguns, so you don't need to worry about that. Over on the right, you can add special mods to each of these guns in exchange for weight. Uh, these are interesting things like the bullet breaks apart into like 50 bullets, or interesting things like they leave a trail of fire on the ground when being shot, but they generate more heat. You can play around with them if you want. I haven't used the mods a super ton. I'm just kind of trying to get you acclimated with the UI. Uh, reactors, you can also set those up from the crafting table over here. Every reactor is comprised of a piston, which sets the threshold for the maximum temperature, basically, that it can handle, uh, versus an injector. Uh, the injector decides effectively how much energy output you get in exchange for how high the T-junction can go on this engine before it shuts down. Uh, so pistons that generate more energy will give you much less temperature to play around with and thus overheat more frequently. That's really all that you need to think about, and then you can offset that by having a piston that generates more pressure. Uh, that way you can get more energy out of this while maintaining max temperature. Basically, it's a tug of war between the pressure that your piston can provide inside the actual engine itself and the energy that the injector can generate in exchange for temperature cap. And then you've also got auxiliary units over here uh, that will increase the unit's resistance, for example, to outside temperatures, inside temperatures, and also provide them with a multiplier. So this engine right here would be really good at operating in extreme environments like volcano environments because it's got 14 uh, temperature resist externally. However, this engine right here will generate a lot of heat from firing its weapons because it has no internal resistance. And these two things are at odds with one another. So internal resistance cancels out external resistance. So it's up to you what you want to do there. But each of these modules does give you a little bit of extra cooling. So regardless of the way that your resistance comes out, you're still going to want to have all these slots filled up because uh, they will give you more cooling power. This engine is done. All we got to do is ignite it, and then we can put it back over there. Uh, you can also run various tests. These levers over here put the reactor under load so that you can test out the cooling. I haven't used them too much because they're not that useful. There's a full testing course for your mechs that you can have them run that puts the engine inside the mech and gives you much better data, so most people use that. This right here is production, so if you've ever seen engineering in XCOM, that's exactly what this is. You have two hangers. You can make orders inside of those hangers. So I can order a new mech right now. I can order armor plating down here when you click on these things it'll tell you what it costs you uh, we've also got ourselves we can get motors and actuators we can get cockpits we can get more guns we can get componentry componentry are a special resource you use to upgrade your city uh, we can get more engines and things like that but these are all like the bare basic defaults that we already have so i'm gonna start out by just telling them to make me a whole bunch of components so that i can upgrade my city and then from there, we'll spend some money ordering a mech. The downside is when you order a mech, it uses up an entire hangar bay. So I can't order any more things. I'm going to leave the other two slots open because this number right here is how many days it's going to be before this stuff arrives. It takes a long time to make these components over here. And then I'm going to take you on over to the research menu. The research menu is a research tree like you've seen in any other game. Uh, the research tree, it costs you science teams and you will initiate a research. They will work on it for two days. It will unlock further researches, and that's pretty much all there is to it. It's not a super complicated system, but this is how you unlock new lasers, new guns, new rocket launchers, all that kind of stuff, new engines, new pistons, all those fun things. This menu over here, we want to go to the calendar, and once we're inside the calendar, we want to advance to the next day. This very scary looking panel is going to pop down on the first day, and it's going to have a lot of red numbers on it. That's because this first day, it counts like all of the thematic damage and all of the narrative damage that your arc has taken as like a day one loss. Don't panic about it. This right here is going to make you think that you've lost the game already. You have not. 
I promise. Tomorrow when I pass the day, a lot of these numbers are going to be green and stuff. And so as you can see, we have various systems that comprise our city. They are all in decline. So the city is losing energy. The city is losing food supply. We have 4,000 out of 12,000 people. So a third of the human beings left on Earth are wounded or sick right now. Uh, we have our life support systems are being heavily drained. How do you fix that? Well, you hit this little button right here. Click and drag that upwards to get rid of it. This is your city display. Each of these circles is a district. The number that you're seeing on the district is how it will be referred to uh, when you get communiques and things. So if it's like, oh, District 63 is taking damage, you got to come over here and find District 63. And District 63 would be a residential area, which means that if we were to upgrade it, it would increase our life support, it would increase our healing of wounded civilians, and it would increase the repair of city damage by 1%. And these, the costs for fixing all this stuff is listed over on the right in components. And so that's pretty much it. You are going to want at the beginning of the game, turn on the floating tooltips. The floating tooltips are one of the most useful things that have been added to the game. On top of that, the inaccessibility of this game has been assuaged a little bit from the last time we played because they've given you a huge in-game manual, uh, sort of Arstotzka style, that you can go through and it will teach you probably 80% of everything you need to know. I read this entire manual last night just to make sure that the information was good before filming this video. This manual is very helpful, well done to the developer. Last time I played this game, it was utterly incomprehensible and almost impossible to figure out. Now, between the pop-up tooltips and also this manual right here, the game is in pretty good shape, actually. You can learn to play it pretty quickly as long as you don't mind about 30 minutes of reading uh, at the beginning of your experience. Let's go ahead and take another mission, shall we? We've got bugs to kill. Uh, so let's take... Well, I don't want you to do that. Stop that right there. Uh, we need to find a mission. So in this game, you kind of want to fight like an abject coward. And what I mean by that is that this game is going to get harder as time goes along, and your losses in this game are not replaceable. Like I said, it's a roguelike if you really boil it down. It's not a classic Berlin formula roguelike, but it follows roguelike formula. Losses cannot be replaced. So, like, losing a pilot really sucks. Losing a mech, you can get a new one, but it's going to take you like a week, and by the time you get it, the map is constantly getting harder. So this is a game where you're supposed to play for like 20, 30 days, lose, come back with the knowledge that you've learned, play again, make it 40 days that time, and sometimes RNG is just going to wipe you out. If you ever need help with this layer right here, you can scan by different resources and different things that are all around you, but you can also turn on a legend for each of these overlays that will tell you what stuff means inside the context of the game grid. Now, we seem to have landed inside, like, a volcanic zone. That's a little bit of a problem. What we're going to need to do... Oh, boy, we've got some nasty missions around us, too. That guy shoots rockets at us. Lovely. Okay, well, we're probably going to want to head north into Europe. So let's take this mission. The downside is the temperature is incredibly extreme over here. So our guys are probably going to overheat a lot. Uh, we'll see how it goes. We've already got them set up, so I don't really see a reason to fiddle around with anything for right now. As far as pilots go, if anybody has, like, low vitality, they should go inside the hospital over here. So the hospital gives you stress resistance and vitality back. Uh, the training gives you more CBS and reaction time at the exchange of your stress resistance and vitality. So it's always going to be a little bit of a push and pull. These stats up here are explained inside the guidebook, but basically reaction is how fast they change targets and fire at things. Vitality is is their overall health from when they take a hit that gets into the cockpit. Stress resistance is their resistance to going rogue and not following your orders. Uh, CBS test is going to be a rough... I mean, CBS test is basically the grade of how good of a pilot they are. All right? That, that's pretty much what it comes down to. That's what they scored on, like, their Mech Warrior ASVAB, with 100 being the maximum, and so... CBS test is kind of like esoteric, but it affects a lot of random things that have to do with like subsystems and how fast they recover from overheating and things of that nature, how well trained they are basically. All right, let's send them on into here and see if we can get ourselves wet with a little bit of combat. I am a little bit worried about the temperature. It's very high, but we'll see how it goes. Now the goal of this mission, it doesn't really tell you an objective. The objective is to like kill everything on the map, all right? There's gonna be a boss guy on the map, you're gonna want him dead. Uh, we've got a big worm right there. We're going to bomb it out because that worm is too close to spawn, and I hate it, and I want it to die. Oh, we've got another worm right there. Oh, we don't have any artillery strikes left. Two worms! Okay, this is a bit of a hot drop, ain't it? This is a little bit of a problem. Well, we killed one worm. 
Let's go. Oh, and we've got a firestorm next to us. That's not good. Okay. Uh, what we're going to do then is we're just going to hold position for a minute. We're going to advance on this nest because this is what's spawning the bugs. So we want to kill that nest sooner rather than later. The downside here is very much that the nest can move and it's moving away from us. It's also, I think, resistant to the firestorm. So I don't think the firestorm is going to clear it out for us. Let's go ahead and flank around the firestorm over here to the left. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, we're getting overrun right now. We are definitely overheating far too frequently. We got to take out a spawner like right this second. If we don't get a spawner, we are hosed. So let's move over and kill a spawner. Uh, every time you're hearing that like burk, burk, noise, that means somebody overheated. So we're overheating like a lot right now. Keep following that thing and kill it. I want it dead. We just need to minimize the amount of bugs that are on grid right now. We have taken a little bit of damage to our mechs, unfortunately, as a function of overheating. Now that the firestorm's gone, we're going to want to take that position right there. Temperatures are very high right now, as you can see from all of our meters. We're probably going to have a lot of repairs that we need to do after this mission, would be my guess. We've got a whole lot of toasted transistors. This guy is going to be a little bit tougher. Oh, we got him. Good. Okay, he's down. From what I can tell on radar, there's another spawner over here to the right, so I'm going to get after it. There it is right there. Okay, good to know. Firestorm is headed right for us, so unfortunately, I'm going to have to cut to the right. Don't want to cut to the right. We'll cut downwards a little bit. We need to get an angle on this nest down here, though. Oh, wrong time to overheat for literally everyone. We need to push into a corner over here. If we cannot get to this corner, we're going to have a really bad time. I need to set up consistent lines of fire on that nest. All right, we've got most of the spawns taken care of now. Uh, now our goal is going to be to free up our lines of sight and go after that last hive right there. We've taken a lot of damage, though, to some of our mechs. You can see the little red meter filling up right there. That's not good. We need to finish this up and get out of here before it gets any worse. Uh, the high temperatures are a big issue, so it might be a good idea to pull the reactors on all of these mechs and increase the external heat resistance uh, to counteract what we're going up against right now. Now, this big guy in the middle is going to be our next target. We got to get him. So let's go ahead and push up this way. Temperature should recover a little bit, but we're idling in the red and the yellow right now, which is just like multiple different flavors of terrible. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can duck in here before he comes back around to shoot at us. One of my mechs overheated at a bad time. But this big worm thing right here needs to die. Unfortunately, we've got another spawner right behind us, too. All right, we killed the big worm thing. Oh, no, I just gave an order that's going to put them inside the firestorm. Go back over that way. Oh, my God, that was so close, dude. That was, like, really bad. All right, you guys hang out over here and hope the firestorm doesn't move around on you. Just farm some bugs. We'll move over to the right. Reload pretty quickly. Uh, the bad guys, so this is why you got to take care of the worms. They drop turrets all over the place. Oof, he almost got got. I saw that. Okay, so we're going to want to rotate up to, like, right here. And we're going to want to kill this turret off. We can't advance until we kill off this turret. But as I told you, this is a very interesting, curious little game that I honestly think is actually a stroke of brilliance. This is the kind of thing, like, you have no idea how much time I spend just super bored with another platformer. Like, another roguelike card game. You know what I mean? Like, this is why I love indie games. Right here. This title is why I love indie games. Uh, accuracy's a little bad right now. Can you guys hit that? Thank you. Uh, so, now that you guys have hit that, we got a firestorm coming towards us. Let's get out of the way. We want to collect all this loot, otherwise we don't get paid for this mission. This is ultimately the reason why we came on this mission is to get all this loot because this is the metals that we need in order to do all our manufacturing and stuff. So we'll grab it all off the ground. It is marked on the map for you. Uh, it looks like little green crates. It looks like there's supposed to be one over here, but I can't see it. We're going to kill this guy off real fast. 
because he should drop a bunch of loot for us. There's the bunch of loot. So let's go ahead and send them on in. I don't know what these red spots are. I think they're like oil pits or something. That or they're like fire pits or something. It's kind of hard to say. I think they're maybe like fire pits or something. I don't know. Our temperature was going up while we were standing inside them. Either way, avoid them. I probably shouldn't have given that order right there. We'll pick up all these goodies. There's all the goodies. And whenever there's like no enemies left in contact, it's going to put you in times two mode as far as speed goes. And if we wanted to complete this mission, all we have to do is go to Nav B, which is marked yellow on our radar down here. And it's the spot where the giant serpent thing that we slew was. So let's go ahead and we'll head on in there. And as you can see, progress 100%. We double left click and it will complete the mission. Double left click as a reminder, just tells your pilots to auto battle and work their way towards the objective. What's incredible is you don't really realize how many bugs you're mulching when you're playing this game. We killed 2,000 little bugs while we were running around. It's crazy, right? That's a lot of killing. Now let's go ahead and continue. I think, are these the medals right here? They are. Let's give them their little medals too. There we go. We'll give Freeze a couple of medals for being awesome. Uh, we'll give a we'll give a gold star to Jennifer. That looks good to me. Uh, Ellen, yeah, you can get a. I, I'll give you guys a medal too because I don't want you guys to feel left out. Like medals are good. Medals make every nothing like a little piece of tin to really make you feel like it was worth it. Yeah. So as you can see, all of our mechs are damaged, and this is going to lead us into how do you fix mechs in this game? Well, it's a little bit tiny bit hidden. Uh, so these are going to go into maintenance for the next 24 hours. You can click this button right here and spend a bunch of metalite, and they will just fix all the damage uh, as an extent of the maintenance. The other option that you have is let's say that I take Xylet right here and I drag him off grid. They will go back to the engineering department, and if we drag him inside of here... We can take a look at this little wrench, and it will tell us what damage this guy took. And in fact, he's not that damaged. So this is a mini game, and it's not a mini game that's explained very well. But whenever you want, you can spend metal on to instantly repair this permanent damage perk right here. However, you can send 13 engineers to work on it and it will spread the damage around the rest of the subsystems to jimmy rig this and possibly repair it, thus lowering the metalite cost of fixing it, but also making everything else cost a little bit more. So watch, I hit that right there. Okay, so that reduced our repair by a little bit. And if you have a lot of engineers left, you can play around with this stuff and you can actually save yourself a lot of money. So you see what I did there? I effectively halved the cost of fixing this mech. If I do it again, do I have enough engineers to do this one more time? I do indeed, so go ahead and fix it all off. And then that time around, we came out negative, unfortunately. So we kind of like lost a little bit right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and fix it and put it away. Either way, the repair system in this game is not like Mech Warrior, where you just like fix the thing and it's all better. Uh, in this game, you kind of have to play a little mini game if you want to fix your mechs. You can also up armor them, so there's like armor hard points that you can play around with and different reactive and unreactive coatings and things like that. You can add to your armors. Uh, you can enable and disable self-destruct systems. You can set the ammo ratios for things. Like, there's so many things to tinker with in this game. And many of them that even playing the game at like an intermediate level, I have not fiddled with yet. Uh, you can also paint your mechs if that's the kind of thing that excites you. These are not the only mechs that you get as you work your way down the research tree. For example, if we go over to there. Let me go ahead and bypass a day real quick. Oh, we should probably build up our city a little bit, though. Uh, so what are we doing badly at right now? Uh, wounded humans is pretty rough. We should probably see if we can find the medical bay. I don't know where the medical bay is at. But one thing I would like to see added is when you mouse over consumer goods, it should light up everything that produces a consumer good. Or like when you mouse over life support systems, it should light up everything that has life support, basically, so that you can find it quickly. Now we have a medical compartment over here. So I could potentially upgrade the medical compartment for 40 components. 
I'll do that. It'll help out with the human beings, and it looks like it helps us heal more people, and it makes our life support a little bit better. I'm pretty sure you can only build one upgrade. I don't know this for a fact, but I think you can only buy one upgrade per day, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can only upgrade one department per day, but I was going to upgrade our food supply as well. Uh, we'll go ahead and pay the 200 metalite to fix these as much as possible. Unfortunately, this guy didn't fix, so we got to pull him out of rotation real fast. Sometimes it can be a little sticky, sending him back to, sending him back to engineering. Uh, but what's wrong with you? You have minus 27 hit points. Good God. Okay, that is so much hit points. Uh, let's go ahead and reduce that right there. Reduce it again. I feel like that cost us a lot of metal on to get done, but that's kind of like life. One thing I would mention is that the cost of repairing a mech is significantly more than just buying a new one. Now, granted, it takes you eight days to get the new mech, and it does lock down your entire repair bay. But I do feel like fixing a mech should be cheaper than getting, like, a full new one. I don't know. It's like one of those weird things. Like, I get the balance that's being gone for. Like, I understand it. But some part of my brain is just like, wait, it just cost me, like, 800 mutilon or metalon to fix this thing, and it cost me, like, 200 to buy it. Wait a second. <laughs> uh, we've unlocked our research right there. So we can go back to our research menu. We've got 165 on our science team. I would like to spend, let's put 80 staff on developing a brand new engine model. We will spend 80 staff on inventing a new firearm as well. This is like a large bore, like 50 millimeter auto cannon, basically, that goes thunk, explode, thunk, explode, thunk, explode. Pretty fun to play around with. And then from there, I think everybody should be ready and good to go. Now, when you clear out these tiles right here, the good news is your city can move. So I can give an upward movement motion. And because my city is on legs, it will walk up to here over the course of the next day. You can only attack things that are within two squares of you. Still, we do have a mission on this side. However, a lot of my mechs are still in engineering. So I need to pull these guys, and I need to give the engineering order to send them back over to active rotation. There we go. So they are now back in active rotation. They are on the front lines. I also need to go to my city readout right here. And I needed to upgrade. Let's upgrade the air purification system, I think. Because that gives us bonuses to energy, damage, and life support. All of which are things that we're kind of struggling with right now. And some of those things like life support will tie back into people healing faster and getting better rather than dying. And we need, if we're going to escape the planet Earth, we're going to need as many human beings as possible. Like, I'm pretty sure you need a sample size of like 1,500 or like 1,000 to avoid genetic drift. I forget what it is. There's like a very, ooh, this is going to be a nasty mission. It's inside of the tube. Okay. We'll rotate in some new pilots for this one, I think. Uh, we're going to take this mission right here, and we're going to send Freeze, a squad commander. We shouldn't have as many problems with overheating on this one because the native temperature is freezing. So what went wrong with that last mission was that it was just too hot for our mechs to handle. We were basically fighting inside of a volcano. All right, so our mechs are over here. Uh, go ahead and proceed with the mission. Uh, because in a tunnel like this, it's going to be very easy to get overrun, I think, if we don't bushwhack spawners fairly quickly. Now, this does give us sort of a natural advantage at the moment, because we have artillery fire that can be deployed down into the tube. And so artillery fire is going to effectively be a giant red light for the bugs inside this area. But if they start to group up too much, I think we're going to struggle. So I'm going to need some cover right here, I think. Oh, no, we can't use artillery fire in here. Never mind then. I thought we could use artillery. Last build that I played, you could use artillery fire on these cave missions. Not so much anymore. Uh, we are going to have to fight our way through. I don't think there's any way around that. Oh, boy. Yeah, a lot of bad things are happening right now. We got worms on the grid. Let's pull back down to here. Real bad time to have to reload right there, buddy. Real, real bad time to reload. 
Okay, we killed the turret, I think, before it spawned. No, we didn't. Never mind. We killed it just as it spawned. So I think somebody... Actually, it shot and missed. Good. Pull back. Uh, we need to deal with this worm before we deal with anything else. So we're going to wait for the worms to go on through. But yeah, this is Mech Engineers. I think this game is utterly great. This is the kind of game that is incomprehensible and complicated and sort of like overly intentionally obtuse on purpose uh, to get you into the swing of feeling immersed when it comes to like the heavy metal UI and like the analog nature of all the switches and everything else that exists inside the game. But I think if you give it a little bit of time and with a lot of the new resources that have been added on in, this is easily one of the most unique, most interesting games on Steam by a large margin. Like, it's not your standard fair roguelite deck builder that everybody else is just, like, deucing out at the moment. Uh, it's something actually real, and it's something actually cool, and it's actually something that hasn't been done yet. And for that reason, I recommend it incredibly highly. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to do it. Today up on the chopping block, we were fooling around with actually a pretty nasty set of missions at the beginning of the game. I've learned my lesson about deploying to North Africa. I'll tell you that. I don't think I'll deploy to North Africa ever again. Uh, North Africa, kind of like, Northwest Africa, kind of a death trap in this game when you deploy to it. I've tried, like, Mesopotamia. I've tried, like, Russia. I did North America. All of those were easier than Northwest Africa. Northwest Africa, kind of a mess in this game. Uh, we've got a lot of bad mission setups. But I enjoyed this video tremendously, both making it and researching to make the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it as well. Uh, this is a really, really rad game, and I cannot recommend it highly enough. I will catch you all later. Thank you for spending and or wasting your time with me here at the Nerd Castle. I'll be back tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. Bye, folks.